tryna go and get the green like I'm Rango. Lil Shotty tryna eat me up tomorrow like a mango. I'm really just that young nigga. Ain't nowhere I can't go. Crazy how I try to write my wrong. Now I write a song. Shot- you wait, you Welcome to the podcast, bro. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Appreciate the opportunity for real. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Um, first thing I want to ask you, bro, uh, is just let everybody know where you're from and uh, how it was growing up in your area. I'm from West Palm Beach. I grew up, I grew up in a nice area for real. It was me, my mom, and my brother. I always had my family around me. I grew up pretty safe. I was not no jumping out of the porch. I was not in no streets for real. But I always took a liking to hip hop. Though I started out listening to folks like young, like when I was in elementary school, I was listening to folks like Mob Deep, Eminem, Young Thug, Future, Rich Homie Quan. Chief Keith, and they were all popping around that time. And I'm like, okay, they made rapping seem so easy. So I was like, nah, I got to get tapped in now. So I started freestyling. I started feeling like I could really, like, emulate what they were doing, too. And that's how yeah. it was going up. That was real good. My mom, she always had me for her. Thank God for her. Yeah, bro, that's great to hear. Um, So, like, like you, the people you were stating, like, what were you hearing as a child, like, before – like what what was being played around you like in your house and stuff growing up before oh. like you really had your ox cord? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So my mom, so I'm Ghanaian. We from we from West Africa. So we grew up in the house. My mom primarily she was playing gospel and Afro beats. So she used to be playing a lot more like the old school Afro beats. But and that grew into me loving Afro beats even now at this age. So I wasn't she was never really into rap herself, but she was always big into music. She would always sing around the house and she was like doing chores, anything like that. So I felt like I was always going to be more musically inclined in that sense because I was always around some songs. And it, it is inspiring me and made me more creative, I feel like, too. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. Growing up uh, around music, I think that's important for children and it yeah. definitely um, inspires a lot of people, you know, to have their creativity come out. Um, yeah, that exposure is different. Yeah, no, 100%, bro. Um, well, let's talk about your music so far this year. Uh, just in 2023 alone, you already dropped uh, Two Way, Two Way Archived, and then the Happy Birthday EP. L- talk oh, about your work bro. ethic so far. My work ethic, all right, bro. So, shout out to my friend, shout out especially to my homeboy, Kato, Chris, uh, my homeboy, Kristen. So, like, maybe some at some point, either late last year or early this year, he sent me this video by Russ, and Russ is one of the prominent independent artists. He was really talking about how to gain exposure and gain traction as an artist in the market. And you're just working by yourself or like with a small team and you don't really have an A&R or a manager. So a big thing Russ was um, pushing for was consistency. So, so it, it all started back back during COVID time. 2020, I was sophomore in high school. Me and my friends, we had always had a little rapping idea in mind, but we had it further developed. So what we would do, we got on FL Studio. We started making songs like maybe every day, every other day. They were trash at the start, but that's cool because that's necessary to go through that process. So eventually, when I started getting in my own group, I'm like, okay, now I'm learning how to I'm learning how to mix and master my own songs. I could sit down in my room and record myself. I'm upgrading my studio. I'm doing this and that. It's like when I started becoming more self sufficient, and I started I gained the confidence to post my music on social media platforms. And I thought people were really tapping in with me. I'm like, dang, I gotta go up. And the process became so addictive because every time I was making songs, they weren't, it wasn't like a crazy improvement per song, but I could see that I'm learning small, small different things to get more accustomed to rapping, this and that. So then I, I kept making songs. So this year alone, like I really sat down and looked at it. I definitely, I've dropped like at least like five tastes this year. I started listening out my homeboy, Christian, again, Kato, he told me, Hey, bro, we can probably start dropping like every week. We don't start pulling in some traction. So, I'm out of luck. So, this year, um, I dropped the tapes I dropped or tapes slash album. I dropped two of the album. I dropped um, session one, session two, session three, session four. Two way archive that's six. Um, let's see. Two way archive is six. Back to back is seven. Happy birthday, um, AP. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, that's eight. Two way takeover is nine. Um, two times living is ten. So I really dropped ten tapes this year. Flash album. And the thing is, my albums and like all my little tapes, they started to like start to pull more and more numbers. Like as time went on, and I kept dropping more and more stuff. It's like basketball. You want to get better at hooping, you gotta go out there and put some shots up. But rapping, I just had to get in the studio a lot more often so I could like really practice what I practice my craft. Cause 
Uh, me dropping every week. It's not like I'm going to the studio and recording just just anything because a, a week is a lot of time. And I really get I really record like I can record a lot of songs in one day when I'm really in that mode. But for me, it's just like it's good practice dropping every week. It keeps me grounded. It keeps people engaged with my stuff. Cause like I'm not I'm not someone like Cardi who could deactivate their Instagram for like God knows how long and come back and I'm gonna have a cult fan base who's gonna eat it up. You know, I really gotta stay consistent. And it's been working too, like this year. I had 200k streams all time on Spotify so far, and looking back at when I started out and I wasn't pulling so many streams, I'm looking at like, dang, the craft gotten better. I'm starting to get better at promoting myself. It's a it's a struggle doing it, but it works though. Yeah, no, no doubt, bro. And and like you said when you first started answering, um, Russ, like he he's a great example, especially for upcoming artists. Um, I don't know, I know you probably saw everything he said and was chopping up in the interview, but he also has a book that explains it all. I, I always suggest all uh upcoming rappers to get the book and read it. Oh, but appreciate it. I didn't know you had a book. That's nice. Yeah, though. yeah, the book breaks it the whole game down, bro. But yeah, it's crazy when I saw like cause people used to hate on Russell call him corny. I was never really too tapped in with Russell. So I never really it's understood fire, like, bro. why they did. But I'm just, I looked at him and like I think last time I checked he had like 15 million, 16 million monthly listeners on Spotify as an independent artist. You take your distro kid when he had 15 million listeners, you're making bread every single month. That's crazy. Like I listen to Afrobeats a lot with this artist Ashake. He has a he has his album called Um Mr. Money with the Vibe. Russ got a song with him. I couldn't even believe that. Cause that's like that's that's a whole different continent coming together with different sounds. And I'm surprised that Russ, the independent artist, got that far to start collabing with these big name artists and grow, grow his his own name too. Yeah, bro. Ruh, his last album, Santiago, is definitely one of the best albums this year. If, if you haven't heard it or anyone that's watching this haven't heard it, go check it out. Um, Shout out to Russ. So there's obviously a difference, right? When when you get the idea to start making music or you're in the studio or you're at home fucking around with your friends and shit. But then there's a difference when, you know, you drop it online and anyone you've ever known, anyone you're friends with, anyone that sees it, that now they can put an input in, right? So, so how did you get the confidence to start dropping online and how did you deal with like any criticism that you got? This is big. I feel like for anyone trying to get better in any walk of life, criticism is extremely important. You can't be arrogant or headstrong when people are trying to help you elevate. So for me, it's me and my homeboys, like me, my friend, my homeboy, Prada Benz, uh, Kato, my mom next door, all them, all my boys who started out rapping with me for real. <laughs> We were all, we we all got on FL around a similar time. My homeboy, Prada Benz, Malachi, he was on FL a little a little longer before us. He used to be a producer before he was an artist. So he already had us, he, he was putting us on onto the game early on for real. So well, getting the confidence at first, me and my friend Kristen, we were, because it was really us at first, we were, we were both sharing knowledge with each other and trying to get better and better. We always hang out to come record. So for us, it was consistently consistently making songs we would always freestyle together we always would be looking at we always would listen to like artists we thought were real good like for me one of my biggest things with how i wanted to with how i got better and gaining confidence to drop i had to listen to hard artists like i listen to i listen to a lot of things but when i started listening to some more mechanical rappers i listen to people like like people in brazil to baldy james benny the busher conway the machine i started listening to british rappers central c dave all them their flow is stupid like when you listen to them it's like you could really take notes and you could see the creativity in them so you're like okay i see what i'm working toward i see what i want to emulate so you can get back in the booth keep on trying to keep on trying because consistency and dedication eventually you start realizing that okay Today, I'm no longer where I was maybe like two months ago. And so it took us a while to get to the confidence, but it was a lot of practice. At first, we started out sending our posts or sending our songs to like some of our friends and we asked them for feedback too. So I have a big group chat of my friends from my, from my high school and some people from my uh, middle school too. So I would, I'll would send my songs to them, some of my cousins. They tell me this and this good. You could work on this and that. So it's like I was beta testing the music. I was sending it to a few people and they would help me get right. And then eventually I kept doing that and I kept sending it back. I was like, oh no, this is good. You gotta drop this. And when you it really it's really like crazy when someone tells you to like your first song really good, you could really drop that. Cause now that's someone really appreciating your your work, your time and dedication. So building that confidence is really important. So I'm thankful for all the criticism because I was always willing to listen. 
clock because they were always right too. Because at first you're not gonna notice it because you're so used to doing what you're doing. But when when someone looks at it from the outside, they're like, okay, I see you could improve on this and then make your whole sound better like that. Like for me, one of my biggest things was one of my biggest things. I feel like it was sounding like I was rapping instead of just talking. That's the biggest learning curve because I could always freestyle. But when you sit down and you're going to record yourself, you have to get in the mode. Like, I'm making a song. I'm not just talking like a podcast on the mic. You know, I'm talking differently. You have to really sound like you're, you have to get acquainted. You got to get comfortable with yourself on the mic. And when you're able to experiment and really find your sound and find your lane and find how you want to sound, the confidence comes quick. And all the criticism will end up having boosted your sound. So you'll be really appreciative that because, you know, you don't want to send your post out to your friends and be like, fire, this is hard, this gas. That's, that's cool. If you really like it, that's cool. But, you know, if that's all your friends are telling you, you're going to have to ask them, like, nah, for real, like, did you actually mess with X, Y, Z in the song? So, you know, you could, like, really improve on things because it's it's one thing is be like, oh, this is good. But another thing is like, this is good, but you could improve on this. So now the criticism is so much more valuable because it's not just like bland. It's not like they played it for like 30 seconds and cut it off. It's like, this is real feedback. Someone really trying to help you. So you got to appreciate the criticism a lot. Yeah, no doubt, bro. I think uh, criticism from people that actually care about your craft is important. And um, and I also always say this to people, like even random people online that hate, like hate, hate spring views. So like if, if people are watching you, you're doing something right. To be honest, like, like when you look at some artists, like people controversial artists, like you look at someone like Six Nine, a lot of people will hate on him because oh, he's corny, his image, this and that. I'm not gonna speak on him, but his image and all that hate, it got him, it got him views on Say Cheese, DJ Academics. He was on all the blogs. He was on, he was on Rap House TV. He was everywhere on Instagram. So it's like all of this hate and stuff. It's it put it, it turned it into like a meme too. So he gained traction with like a bunch of a bunch of different spheres of like social networks. So now all that hate and all that attention, though negative, it still brought him like revenue and all that. So get it how you get it, I suppose. Yeah, that, that's definitely uh one person that is a master at working image and the internet at the perfect time. Cause I don't think if he came out today, it would it would have worked how it did in like 2018. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like the perfect formula for the perfect time. You know what I mean? So who yeah, who were some of your who are some of your influences like for making music? Like who like my influences? Yeah. Mm, all right. Okay. Well I'm gonna pull up my Spotify. All right. So wait, with rappers? All right. Let me Yeah, just just somebody. for hip hop. Yeah, give me one sec. Okay. So I have a bunch like well, I'm gonna list some of the like the real prominent ones: Nas, Kanye West, um, Freddie Gibbs, um, Bodie James, Benny the Butcher, Conway the Machine, all of Griselda, um, West Side. You Gun. really like Griselda, huh? I do because I really I appreciate like it's it's they're incorporating like the '90s sound, but they're bring, they're putting their own spin on it. So now it's not like some old hair music. It's not like you know what I'm saying. It's not like it's don't it doesn't sound out of date so i really appreciate it because when it comes down to it they could really rap i appreciate the mechanical rappers a lot because that's what got me into rap so that's what that's really what helped me Lil Wayne, one of my biggest influences because my music is all about punchlines i'm all about lyrics i'm all like baby tron i love the trait rappers too the beats be so energetic the lyrics are creative that's that's basically my whole idea with rap to be honest i like folks like kendrick push a t um, big Young Thug fan, big Future fan. Um, I'm real tapped in with a lot of scenes, though. Like, I grew up primarily listening to, like, Atlanta, Detroit, and I wasn't too big on Florida, but in some Chicago, too. So that was that was really my whole thing, bro. But yeah, any, no. any artist would just mess up. No, you're good, bro. Yeah, any artist who just has creative lyrics, because I don't like – it's so many ways you could say something that can make it sound more appealing or you're gonna for you're gonna make the audience think like Lil Wayne, he could turn or another big one too, BLP culture. He's coming up right now. The bars he has in his songs, like the casual punchline bars are stupid. Like it's crazy what he does on a regular basis in the songs. And it makes me go back and be like, dang, he's real crazy. So any artist 
who can really like really play with their words, I feel like too. And they can really a lot of artists who can put like emotion in music. When I look when I listen to um Dirty Spot 2 for the first time and I listen to Know the Meaning by Future, I was like, bro. I'm not even uh, I'm I'm not even I'm not even from the hood. He had me feeling like I was in Atlanta serving with him. Like that album, it was really you could really hear them embed their lives into the tracks they're making. So you come to appreciate a lot more like authentic artists and people who are really focused on doing their thing too. So, uh, recently I've been getting in, into more artists like JID, Smino. I've been I've been tapping in with J. Cole a lot recently too. Like I have I I grew up, I would get into some of his songs, but I never sat and I listened to this whole like discography before. I've been getting to a lot of J. Cole, all the Dreamville. I've been tapping in with them a lot because like what I'm talking about with the creative artists who are different in their own lane, who can really like play with their words, that's what their whole thing is. And I'm like, dang. Yeah, no, yeah. Know. They inspire me. Yeah. yeah, Dreamville's a great example of like how everyone kind of has their own like, you know, style, but when they come together, it's so great. I had Kaz on the show yeah. before. Shout out yeah, to I Kyle. saw your page, but that was crazy. Ah. Yeah, and and I also like what you're saying too, because that's how I became a fan of hip hop, like with punchlines and words, like you know, people like Big L. And ever since yeah. I started, ever since I started this podcast, I've always said Griselda is doing it better than anyone out right now, lyrically wise. Not like you know what I mean. Everyone has their own style, but like, yeah, Griselda is like really high up there for me, like. Mm-hmm. And I've had some of them on, like Jockeys and um Heeb's been on the show. Uh and I got another surprise, a big, big surprise coming from that camp. But that's nice, that's nice. Yeah, the, everyone will see that one. But um, so the next thing I want to ask you, bro, I ask everybody who comes on the podcast, no matter how famous, how underground, who would yeah. your three dream features be, dead or alive? Three. Pick three anybody dream in the features, world. dead or up. This is, okay, okay, three dream features. All right, right now, I'm going to go off what I've been listening to a lot. Right now, I'm heavy on UK rap. Like, I've been going through Central Sea Holders Gargafee. Like, I really come to appreciate him as an artist. Like, he's real talented. It's like, because when he, I had always heard of him, but when I heard, when I, when he dropped his um album, or little tape, Split Decision with Dave, I listen, I probably listen to that whole thing at least 20 times. Like, it's crazy. And then the little on the radar person I did with Drake, his flow is stupid. Like, the way he could change tempos is crazy to me. So I feel like even being around him in a studio se- studio setting will be real crazy, bro. So I'm going with I'm going with Central C, 100%. Um, I'm probably going to go with Gunna for probably for the same reason, because he just going to put me in a different mode. And then I'm going to go with J.I.D. Because when I look at J.I.D., like he dropped, he he had the one song that recently got on all platforms with Lil Yachty. Um, it was yeah, it, it came was, out last week. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Van Gogh, Van Gogh. Like you could tell that Yachty being around JID in the studio, like because Yachty always like Yachty music, but when he got around like people like JID and them, the way he thought on that song was like crazy. So I feel like I have a lot of artists in line. I always love to collab people like Chief Keith, all them. I grew up on them, but it's like these people. I feel like if I work with them. It will benefit me like crazy just because of like how much I can uh, like mechanically appreciate their music and their flow and all that. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Uh, JID is one of my favorite artists ever since I first discovered him like five years ago. I'm after yeah, him. 2018, so bro. Yeah, I want him on this so bad. I, I need to interview him. <laughs> but yeah, bro, I, I appreciate your list. Central C, uh, UK scene. That's a great choice. And then um, obviously JID as well. Um, who. Where do you so obviously you're fully independent right now, right? You. Um, what do you think you need personally most, like you, to have your career go to the next level? What I need most, okay. So this is hard because this is what I, this is what like every independent artist like tries to find. I feel like because for me, when you start getting in music. You're concerned, like, okay, now I'm producing all these songs, doing this and that. I'm, I'm putting out content consistently. What am I going to do to take this from, like, the, the followers I have to reach more people? That's, like, that's the big, that's the big, like, hard work for a lot of folks, even me. So, so far, what I have been doing, I've really been focused on TikTok and YouTube. I've been posting a lot of edits on my TikTok with, like, a little, like, video, little dance videos on my song. Could those be going? They'll be doing great. And YouTube shorts, the algorithm be getting you right. Even to me, I got like 140 sales on YouTube. Some of my shorts to get like 2,000 views. And it's it's crazy. So 
what I would need, I feel like if I just get like, if maybe, okay, a few things. So one, the TikTok algorithm one day, if you just randomly push one of your songs, the one of my videos randomly that I dropped a while ago, just push up to like 3,000 songs on TikTok. And I'm like, I don't even know how that happened. That's the algorithm right there. So one, algorithm I just happened with me. Or two, I feel like, I just have to get like the right person to like really hear my music. Cause my whole thing is I've been trying to push it out. Like I've been tapping in with Instagram reels because I heard reels give you like a bunch more engagement and the proof shows, especially with like stuff I've been putting out. So it's like now that I'm putting out all this and I'm consistent with my stuff too. So I have a little content skills. I'm always posting on my page. It's never like dry or nothing like that. Cause I know people really want to stay connected with you. I feel like if I to get like the right person, or the algorithm to really like catch up or get on what I'm on, that could be big. Like it, it could be one song because I have a bunch of songs out. It don't even got to be a recent song. Like one, one day, one song, a bit of a video I posted a song to could have randomly be up because of the algorithm, and that could be it. Because it all starts with like, say you, you reach like ten people and they all tell their friends. Their friends also have friends, so you have a decently high chance to connect them with a bunch of spheres, a bunch of spheres of like um. Social spirits right there, just saw your video doing well. So if I if I could just get an hour of them right, like one time, or get the right person in my stuff, like one time, I could really capitalize on that. I've been you working know. towards it. It's a little hard, but I'm still going, I'm still making content consistently. So we still on that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And and that's what I love about music and hip hop in general, because it only mm -hmm. does take one one song to, to blow up and then other people can check you out and be like, like how you're doing now, you're dropping all this music, right? You could have, say like next month, you have one song that, that hits and goes viral, then people can go back and be like, holy shit, like, you know, I, exactly, I've been, oh, yeah. there's, no, there's no better feeling than when you discover an artist and then you go back and you're like, oh shit, like they've been doing dope shit for a minute. And then you have all exactly. the music to listen to. No way. Like that's how it was for me. Cause with, with, with one artist, Baby Tron, Baby Tron, I had beforehand, I had seen when he was like in his trailer age, when he had, he had like the little, the little black Nike tech, he was in there posted up with Treaty, I don't know how to say her name, I think 3D or Treaty and Stan Will. So that was, I heard about dude probably like, I'm going to say 2018, something like that. But when he dropped Ben Reaper in my freshman year or around that, like the way he went up after like, I was just seeing him on Twitter, I was like, and then after that, he just kept making, he just kept dropping. He had dropped this one album that really like put him up. I feel like, I think this was Back to the Future. That's yeah. one of my favorite albums by him. And when I saw that, it's like, damn, the way he like excelled from one level to the next level like that was, it was crazy. I feel like, so that was really inspiring. Yeah. yeah. No, I completely agree with you, bro. Um, Where do you see your career? Let's say one year from today. One year from today. All right, we're going let, – let, let's just look at what I've done in, like, a year, approximately. So I got on all platforms last year. Um, no, Yeah, last year, 2022, my first song probably came out June, early June 2022. I know that for a fact. My first year, my Spotify rap, I posted it last year. When I posted it, I had – 10,000 streams after making stuff from June to December. And I was pretty proud because that's when I first got into music. So I wasn't like at the real, I wasn't at the level I am now. So me pushing 10K was like, okay, this is a good, it's a real start right here. I'm seeing vision. This year, I don't push 200K streams and my followers have, have gone up at least like 700 since the start of this year. So I'm looking at that and it's like, now that I'm in college and I have like a bigger network of people to connect with, it's like, I feel like I can see myself growing exponentially because the growth I had from last year, I like, in the year not even done, I've gone up 20 times my streams from last year. So I find that real crazy it's like to even believe. So it's like, now I'm seeing the potential. It's like, I see myself, the goal, I feel like, mm, I want to, in the next year or two approximately, I want to have something like, 5,000 followers, but not just that. I want to have like a real, real interactive fan base. That's what I really want because you don't want to have 10,000 followers and have a dead page or more than that and have minimal interactions. If you have 5,000 followers and they're real committed and your post always doing real well, you're getting good and good and engagement, good interactions. You can scale that up real quick when you have an active fan base. 
So something like that. I want to be pushing. I probably want to be pushing something like, um, I'm right now. I have like a thousand one hundred some on Spotify with listeners. I'm probably pushing to go to like, if I could again get like at least like a thousand twenty at five thousand. Like when you have active listeners on Spotify, whenever you drop, your engagement is going to be crazy because all your fans are going to be tapped in, and that gets you on the algorithm for the little radio and this and that, all the little playlists on Spotify for you to get your music pushed out. So I could read something like that. I feel like I really can to it where I've been going. That'll be great because that's going to put me in a position of reach even more people. Even though it's not like a crazy jump number-wise as what people would think, I feel like that's that that that's like enough for me to scale up what I'm doing right now, I feel like. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, you know, there because there's fan there's artists now that make that make good money off just having like ten thousand fans, but they're real fans. Like anything they drop, yeah. they interact. Like you can make good money off that independently. And um mm-hmm. I, I really liked your answer because you know, you're not living you're you're in reality. You know what I mean? Cause some some artists like it's it's not not possible, but like this shit for for ninety five percent of people, it's a grind. Like you know what I mean? It's year after year, like gaining fan bases. Yeah, bro. out there. It's it's not it's not like like how it was in two thousand and sixteen. That's so important to know too. Loud. That's so important. Like that's a big thing I I tell folks when it comes to like with music. Right now, the the music scene, especially rap, rap because rap became so available to everybody. If you could if you could invest in some equipment. You could become a rapper today if you really wanted to be. So when you look at that, you realize it's a bunch of competition. Like if me from West Palm, I probably have at least 200 rappers in the city. I'm not going to bash them or say they're trash them like that. I'm not tapping in with all of them. But when you look at that, you really have to out-compete. You have to outwork all those folks to really be on the top. Another thing, too, because rap is not – music isn't need-based anymore. Like me, I'm in college. I don't. I could put the mic down today and just work, get my degree, and get a job, and I don't gotta rap ever again. Me, I rap because of interest. So now, because it's not need based people, it's more of like a a talent or a hobby turn career. It's like, damn. Okay, now I'm realizing that it's like it's it's gonna take real hard work and dedication to like get where you want to get with rap, and it's not unrealistic. I say, but when you look at back then, like you look at how like Kanye and Jay Z blew up. Not saying they particularly had it easy, but when you look at the era in which they were rapping, this wasn't the the massive internet era we're in today with TikTok and all that stuff. They were really tapped in with their their people around them, like locally, and like back then. I'm pretty sure the folks folks out there with CDs, this and that, like this is like real fan to fan connection stuff right here. And there weren't that many rappers too. Looking at when Jay Z blew up, because Jay Z was like 30 some when he started rapping. If I'm not mistaken, he a little he a little old now, but. And then in the age so, of he was he, rapping, he was way younger than that. <laughs> yeah, oh my fault, bro. I'm, I'm tripping. But when you look at the age in which, when you look at the age in which he started rapping, you you probably he was in New York. You probably had like you. I don't think New York had had like fifty consistent rappers at that point. I don't even believe they probably would have some like fifty. So when you look at that, it's like damn. And you compare that to now, like me, I'm not saying I'm particularly like special or better than like the next dude. But I feel like now with the work ethic I have, if you're looking like five, ten years, I feel I see, I see myself doing better than a lot of folks because I look at people like G Herbo. I've been a big Herb fan, big Salsa fan. I've always been a big fan of like Chicago rap scene. So when I look at them, G Herbo when rapping, he had made one of the dropped straight bars. That's when he was Lil Herb. God knows how long ago. That was at least ten years ago when he had dropped Gangway. When he was out there dropping free cat, free crack with with Bibby. When um, she keep with dropping stuff with um, what is it? I'm I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. It's all right. But yeah, he had dropped. Dang, he had dropped one other time. I'm forgetting the names right now. But he had been dropped for at least ten years. So when you look at like how it took them a while to start catching the buzz, when you look at how Lil Dark, his breakout year was not more than five years. Like his real his his like twenty twenty something run was stupid. That's when he really be, he really got put on like the face. He was like really, really out there. He was coming up prior, but he had worked all those years for him to really like start getting recognition like crazy. So it's like, damn. When you look at that, it's like you're you're gonna appreciate the the grind a lot more because you're like, oh, okay, 
rap doesn't happen overnight. And with those people, it took them maybe 10 years to get to where they are today. So that really could inspire you. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Um, So before we get out of here, last thing I'm going to ask you, uh, what can people that watch this expect from you and say like the next month or two? And what can your fans expect coming from you? Next month or two? All right, Pete. All right. So crazy thing is I got one song set up on my distro. So for the rest of the year, I'm dropping – I'm dropping um a single. I'm dropping I'm dropping a single with a fast version too. I'm dropping like every eight to ten days. I literally just dropped uh twelve at twelve a.m. So I'm dropping like pretty much uh every eight to ten days. I'm still putting out content. I'm still maybe straight check my page. You're gonna see more and more new content. You're gonna see more and more new things, more and more new songs. So I'm gonna keep hitting them with the same consistency, same content, same Instagram lives. I'm still on YouTube shorts. I'm still I'm still making songs of folks in the area. I'm still doing everything. So I'm still, I'm still consistent. We always dropping. We always working. So fans that with the things that things that they've been seeing, the consistency and me continuing to drop and work hard, that's what they're gonna keep seeing. They're gonna keep seeing the stats go up. So these big things planned for the future. This year, I got a lot going on with the song. So folks gotta catch up, they gotta tune in. But yeah, that's that for real. Yeah, before we get out of here, bro, uh, just let everybody know how you spell your artist name and uh, where they can look you up. Right there. All right, my artist name, uh, two, like the number two, W-A-Y dot or period, J-U-D-E, no space. I'm on all platforms. I'm probably on our heart radio at this point, but I'm everywhere. But only thing is, though, my new music, not really on SoundCloud because I ran out of space on my main account. And I wasn't going to pay for DistroKid and SoundCloud, but I am everywhere, though. So tap in with me. Yeah, bro. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, it's been an honor to get to know you and have you on. And um, just keep grinding, bro. You're putting out definitely enough music. Just keep at it. And um, if there's anything that we could do for you over here, bro, let me know. I appreciate the opportunity for real. Thank you, bro. I'm going to keep going. Appreciate that.